Hey, go up. Good morning, car guys and car gals. Welcome. This is Lou Ramirez, the car guy. This is Farland Arts, the sub five hero. And we are brewing Solution. 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 I got to get me another sip of car. Man, you must just because I got to get my tongue together because we got a good conversation and a cup of coffee to enjoy with a friend that is on the other side of the dealership that really is going to bring you some great insight. And I'm really excited to get in into this interview, but we are up early. Just like all those people that work in fixed ops, folks, they are there watching the sun rise, mm. getting excited to help people out with their yes. transportation problems. So we want to get this brew started. So do us a quick favor. Tag a car guy. You know what's up. Tag a car gal. Share this out, folks. Get them. We need some help. Let's Sign get some people cash. in here today because we got some great information from a superstar. Matter of fact, a little Hollywood going on. So we'll go into that a little bit more in a little bit, but folks, We'll be back. Hey, man, so excited. We are so pumped up. Hopefully you got your little groove on and that music is inside of your head. Again, good morning to Charles Higgins, my brother Joey Bell, all the way in the Middle East, thank you so much for joining us this Good morning. Service again, Joey, this, man. Yes. Glad you're here. I'm glad you're able to watch, man. It's pretty cool how we can do that across the world at different time zones, different parts, and, and be in, compl in complete different situations. So thanks for being here today. Um, folks, we have a great guest here today. Uh, we are really, we really, really, really excited about this. This is a way to get our second season started, folks. We got the second season getting released on 1 20, 20, 20, 21, folks. It's part two, season two, car guy coffee, let's brew. All that stuff's getting ready to happen. And Russell, Hill, Hollywood, Mr. Hollywood, Hill. we're going to get into that a little bit more, but Russell is going to be joining us today. And, and Russell is a fixed ops mastermind type guy, you know. We've brought some fixed up guys on here before. We've made friends with some fixed up guys, and I'm very glad that I have. I've always been really close with my fixed ops and my dealerships that I've been involved with. Um, I think it's great to have a team team type of atmosphere with those with the people in the back because those people are producing some big money. I know plenty of stores out there that would not even be open if it wasn't for fixed ops because the front side ain't doing what they're supposed to do. Or, you know, so fixed ops is making the money for the dealer. So I'm real happy to have him here today. Mr. Russell Hill, and without further ado, here we go. Mr. Hollywood, what's up? How you doing, hey, Russell? You drank, you guys, you guys have drank way too much coffee this morning. <laughs> I'm only two sips in. <laughs> <laughs> We're just getting started. We're just getting started. So, you know, we have people watching us right now on LinkedIn. We have people watching us on Facebook. We have people watching us on, um, YouTube even. We spread this, we spread it out there. So, you know, we're going to have a lot of fun. There's going to probably be some questions on here, but most important, I'm ready to question you and get some questions about what you do. I know that you're the co-founder of your company, man. I'm excited to get into that, how you got there, where you're from, all that type of stuff. Welcome to the cafe. Okay. We're real yeah. excited to have you here. Glad, glad to be here. Glad to be here. I'd like to a uh, shout out to uh, Charity, uh, our CMO, for, for setting this up. She's amazing. Yeah, Charity reached out. She even reached out to me this morning. She was like, hey, what's the link? I was like, all right. <laughs> I already sent it to Hollywood. He's good to go. He's good. <laughs> so we are here. We're live. Charity, thank you so much for connecting us. Um, Charity is a, uh, obviously a hard worker for you and she knows, yeah. she knows what she's looking for because she reached out to us. <laughs> so we appreciate her and we appreciate you for being here. I know that time is money and money is time and it's very important. So let's get this thing going. So Russ, we do this thing called a five liner. Now, these are five questions we ask everybody that come on the show, and it's a way to get to know how you got to where you're at and what drives you, right? So my first question that I love to ask everyone um, is, is it's a pretty important question, but before I get to any questions, we always got to do something with all our guests. It's a quick timeout. I almost skipped this, and I don't know how I almost did. Turn out, T-Mark. We've taken a couple weeks off of interviewing. Guys, <laughs> right? uh, we, so we're ready. The first thing we do at every show with every one of our guests we apply three F's. Why? Because it's so important that you apply these three F's so that you can have a lifestyle that you do keep growing. You keep going to that next level. You can never go to the next level unless you forgive. And you can't go to the next level unless you focus. And to rise, well, we fly. And flying takes a little bit of trust, the trust inside of yourself, 
Trust yeah. inside of your people, trust inside of your creator, trust inside of your processes, right? And that's the way that you elevate yourself. So together, there is a little bit of a dance move, dance move. Can't we wait till we get an entire uh, dance floor <laughs> of people together rocking the kid? Oh, it's fun, man. It's going to be oh, fun. Man. But Russell Hollywood Hill, welcome to the cafe. And you get to fly with these solutionaries today. Join us, car guys and car gals, wherever you're at. If you're driving, do it one handed. But here we go on three. One, two, three. Forgive. Forgive. Focus. Fly. Oh, and keep, keep rolling. Keep rolling. There you go. Hey, so yeah, no, what's yeah, up? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, dude. Perfect. Yes, yes. No, we're so glad. Now you're part of the you're club. See that. You are part of the car, guy, copy, cat. I love it. I love it. it. We appreciate you. We we appreciate the energy this morning, man. I love the smile. I love that yeah. you're you're willing to be part of this. That tells me this interview is going to be a lot of fun. So right into it. First question I ask everyone. It's their purpose. It's their why. What drives you? What is your why? <clears throat> you know, it's a great question. Really, it's all about the why, isn't it? It's not about the what or the how. It's it's all about the why. You know, most of the things that uh, periodic things come into my head and, and I don't think any of them are really original. I, I, I probably stole them or borrowed them from somebody else. But there's two important dates in in my life. And one is the, the day I was born. And the other one was when I found out why I was born. Ooh, love it. Mm. And that started me on a tremendous journey of um, growth, uh, looking inside. Um, you know, I sometimes reflect that we're not human beings that have occasional spiritual experience. We're actually spiritual beings having a human experience. Oh, so okay. the, the date I figured out why was December 1st, 1994. And that started uh, the second half of my life on just a, a phenomenal journey of, of blessings uh, more than I could I, I could ever really talk about. And I owe it all to the man upstairs. Uh, but before that. It was uh, pretty horrible out there, uh, very selfish, self-centered, self-seeking. And today it's all about giving back and elevating other people. You know, the old Zig Ziglar philosophy, right? If you help yeah. enough other people get what they want, you're going to get what you want. Maybe not in the time frame you think it should be. That's another thing you got to deal with, acceptance. But right. that, that that's my why, giving back and uh, family uh, and and building something uh, and leaving a legacy and a footprint that that I, I, I contributed to mankind. That's awesome. Legacy. Love you're leaving it. your legacy on this planet. You're leaving a mark right. on this planet that is of good, of love. You know, there's legacies that people can leave that are not good, you know, such okay. as, a, like, you know, I don't mean, to, we're not comparing, but like an Adolf Hitler, a Saddam Hussein, yeah. a, you yeah. know, those legacies are not what we're looking for. No. What we're looking for is legacies of, peace, of love, of sharing, of growth, of continually looking to help other people, not just being selfish. And man, you are definitely pioneering that way. I, lo I love your, your speak. When you talk about your why, I love how you, 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 you said you have a date, you know, when you changed, when you went from, when you went from living on the dark side to you got the Jedi way, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm so excited. May the force be with you. Right. Amen. That's right. And it always shall. So, you know, it's the thing about the force, the force is real, folks. And whether you believe it or not, the force is real. And in order to tap into it, you have to really open up your mind. You have to really be in, in a certain way of life, you know. And, and, and it's cheesy to say, but it is a Jedi, Jedi way of life. You have to be understanding that you are a powerful person that your mind has a lot more strength and ability than you could ever imagine, that you have a gift inside you. We all do. We all have gifts. The gifts are, are us to find. Our, it's also our job to use those gifts. It's our job to use them in a good way. And, and gifts could be as simple as making somebody else smile, um, make, you know, helping somebody buy a car, helping somebody get their car fixed. Help Whatever that gift is that you have inside you, Use it, share it, love it, man, and you're doing a great job with it. I'm excited. You got me all pumped up this morning. Yeah, he's saying, man, good stuff. It's good you know, good. a lot of people come on here and they talk about their why, they talk about these things. Um, you went into depth about your date on it. You know, before you said '94, what did you do? Um, I, I was uh, in the car business. I've been in the car business since '85, but. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's nothing, it's really nothing that uh, either everybody directly knows about or certainly have been impacted uh, with their immediate family, drugs and alcohol. All right, yeah. Bad deal, man. It just, it, uh, it, it just destroyed everything I touched. And 
I'll tell you what, it, you know, I realized um, on that date, just down on the December 1st, that drugs and alcohol really were never my problem. My problem was right here and right here. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm a strong believer that, of course, all of that's affected up here is by weight of right here. That's right. Weight, folks, I mean, whether, whether we're looking at uh, how life began, there's a spark that is that heartbeat that is created. So the first thing that starts actually moving and, and creating life is that heart. And that's what fuels the brain. That's what exactly. fuels the entire body, right? And as a man thinketh in his heart, that's right. So is he. So whatever it is that you believe about yourself at heart, not which, not just the things that you say. Now, faith comes by hearing, right, and hearing uh, the, the word. So the good word that's spoken over you or the bad word that's spoken over you, whatever you attach your faith to is what's going to be. Right. If you believe things are going to suck, they're going to suck. Right. If, you think, if you believe things are going to grow and they're going to be great and prosperous, we'll keep speaking that. If you <laughs> feel as though uh, your, your employees are, are going to be good, well, whatever it is that you say to them and whatever it is that you speak is what they believe. And that, that pours over into the home, that pours over into your business, that pours over yeah. into your, your relationships, your hobbies, everything that you do, period. And, and, yep. and it's exciting to have somebody on the show that's starting us off right away in this entire new season that's coming forward because there is a level of spiritual IQ that we want to make sure that we invoke you all to start growing you, that we get you all to start getting the understanding that your spirit man has to be lined up properly and growing in order for all of the other elements to come together. Remember, right. the spirit of joy, we're coming out of the Christmas season, right? The holiday right. season where, where joy is all over the place, right? And we speak of the joy and rejoice and exciting. And, and so many times it gets subdued to just that time of the year. Man, it does. And in, in black type of a lifestyle is something that should be every day, right? Right. Every single day you should be uh, looking to to be giving. Every single day you should be joyful. Every single day you should be uh, trying to find the positive. And it's exciting to have somebody in here uh, that's helping us get this started in 2021, getting you some of that joy and fun. Man, I'm so pumped up. Thank you so much for just... Obviously, I'm, I'm pumped up now that uh, <laughs> right? you, you poked something in me. You did poke something inside the bear right there. Uh, yeah. well, I want to dig a little bit deeper with that. Um, but on the car guy side of it, um, I, I am very, very interested on understanding more of the fixed ops marketing. And because we're, we're some guys that really know how to handle things on the front end of a store. We understand marketing, how to get people showing up to, to say, hey, I want, I want this deal on this car. But folks, right. there's a whole other level of marketing. And if you all get your mail, right, and you get your discounts on your tires, you get your discounts on your oil changes, you're seeing all the, the direct stuff that comes to you at, at home, there's a whole other side of marketing that keeps feeding the big, hungry yep. monster of the back end of every single dealership. And you are a specialist inside of that. And I want to know, Russell Hollywood Hill, how did you get involved inside of fixed ops marketing? Well, you know, thank you for the kind word specialist. I don't know. I'll just remain a little humble there. <laughs> I mean, I cut my teeth on the bearable side and uh, I was actually in retail for 16 years. I left the retail space in January of 2000 and I went to work for an actual CRM company. Uh, well, it wasn't even that at the time, about six months after I, I started there, uh, we started transitioning over to, to CRM and I was there for 11 years and I saw, um, you know, I, I, I ended up after 11 years getting, getting a piece of the company just from sweat equity. So I learned a lot about stock and partnership, et cetera. And then I saw things changing. Uh, technology was taking a different twist. I decided I wanted to do something different. So I, I took the money that I had and I actually bought into a, another company, which was a, a technology company that had to do with uh, new and used specials. Um, and uh, after nine and a half years of that, uh, and I've always known a lot about fixed ops, not as much as I know about variable, but just enough to be really dangerous but when I'm out of my element or I'm talking to a real fixed ops guru, because there's so many different aspects of fixed operations, the, the part that, that we are into and that we excel at is on the marketing side of that, 
particularly with the website. Um, an example, you, you mentioned earlier about fixed ops has always been the saving grace for, I mean, they're the ones that make all the money. And yet they're treated like stepchildren, redheaded stepchildren uh, that you hear about, uh, particularly on the website. So I remember when websites uh, first started coming on the scene uh, in the late 90s. And they obviously they've evolved to where they're at today, which is phenomenal. But most of the time, tension and effort is spent on the front end and hardly anything on the back end. Mm -hmm. We know that the um, the second most visited content page on any dealer's website is the specials tab. Next to inventory, if you look at heat maps, that's the that's the number two or n number one most clicked after inventory because people are looking for specials. It's got a positive connotation associated with mm it. -hmm. And that's where all four of the dealer's profit centers are located online, right? New and used and obviously parts and service. So my partner and I, uh, from the other company that we sold all our stock back and walked away from, we, we have this vision, we have this dream. So we spent about a month and a half putting together a very detailed business plan that we wanted to revolutionize the fixed operation side of things on the website <laughs> and pull these dealers out of the 20th century into the 21st century because, let's face it, I, I, it doesn't, you, you, what we do and what's out there right now, nobody does. But, I mean, you can get go on some websites now, and you'll still see, see pictures of scissors cutting out a coupon. Are you kidding me? <laughs> now, you won't see that on the ver you won't see that on the variable side of thing. They got all the fancy tools and all the things to funnel customers and to convert them, etc. But they don't have any of that. So that's what we did. We um. We uh, actually rolled this out this year. January 7th is uh, our go live date with our first store. And then COVID, right? <laughs> COVID hit. So all my, all my uh, dealer vendors, you know, stores are closing. You know, everybody's panicking, don't know what to do. But guess who's still essential? Fixed operations, right? Damn right, yeah. Now, back in 2008, when that happened, uh, same thing, but nothing like this. I mean, everything has changed. Technology, shopping habits, what people want, how they want to interact with it. And you better serve it up. And you better serve it up with three clicks or less or they're out of there. Yeah. And so that's what we did. We formulated this company, rolled it out January 7th. We got 118 stores during COVID. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Brand new clients. Uh, it's been uh, it, it's 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 been a ride. Wow, that sounds like one right there. What an adventure of, of discovery, though. Wow. No, it is. And, it, and you're in. Man, it, it, yes, it is. Woo! So, like, <laughs> fit stops is huge, and it's it's just getting bigger and bigger. And what I love is that there's there's been some pretty good figureheads popping up and and bringing light to fit stops. You know, you're yeah. one of the, you're one of them, and I I love that. There's a you know, we had another guest on here, Dave Foy. He's, you know, fix up mastermind. I love Dave. Dave's a great My guy name. doing some good stuff. You got Ted Ings out there doing the round tables and everything else like that. So by doing all those things, it's bringing so much light to where it's making people excited about being part of fix stop. So you're going to start seeing in the next three to four years, you're going to see an increase of really good car people in fix stops. You know, because people are really starting to see that you can be a superstar in fix stops. It's not just about being a mechanic turning wrenches or where. It's there's a chance back there that you could become way more than you could ever imagine, right? You can help and help so many people. Like you said, during this time, you guys were essential. Fix ops people are essential during COVID. They're all this stuff because they needed to be there. People still need their cars fixed. They still need their cars to be runnable for all the essential workers that were driving to work also, right? Exactly. And so on and so forth. So that became a big thing. On the front side of the house, not quite as essential as the back side of the house anymore, nope. right? The back side of the house is what the, where the profit center was for all these dealers out there that were trying to, you know, keep their, their stores open. So I can tell you, I would say a majority of dealers out there, if they didn't have fixed ops, if they didn't have a good program in the back, if they weren't running it right, they probably would be shutting down or very close to shutting down exactly. right now. Those, those fixed ops help them maintain good money, help them keep the doors open, help them maintain payroll, help them maintain a sense of normalcy throughout all this, right? Right. And, 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 but then at the same time, there's people like you showing them how during all this, you could grow massively, how you can become so much more than you were before. If you go through this situation, you learn, grow, expand by the end of COVID, 
you're going to be a huge fix off, just master, right? Mm-hmm. You're going to be, and, and that's what you, that's what you're doing. And I, and I love it. I can see your passion. I loved your answer to that because, you know, you can get answers from people that about their career and it's very short answers. There's, that doesn't mean there's no passion in it. But when someone gives you an answer like you just did, that lets me know that you're really passionate. And you know what you're talking about, that you're, that you have steps lined up. You know how to implement what you're trying to implement the whole nine. I love it. And it makes it easy because this is like a talk show, right? Yeah. So we definitely uh, know that our audience sees us talking plenty. Yeah. <laughs> when our guests jump in here and uh, get to explain and get to say things and get to speak. Um, it, it, it's exciting. Thank you so much for, for doing that and, and for highlighting uh, that this time there is growth inside of business. Big time. You have such a, a, a key piece of growth that's coming because now people are listening for the solutions to actually start brewing inside of their business and their operation. And it's it's not like those seeds haven't been sown over the years. It's not like you haven't been knocking at dealers' doors or say, saying, hey, guys, there's a solution and then I could help, right? But then when when we everybody says then, <laughs> right? Then COVID happens and everybody <laughs> says, what, <laughs> do do? what do I do? What do I do? And then say, hey, remember me? I, uh, I got a solution for that. I have a way to help get you out there. And uh, that that's so so important that everybody pays attention to the the facts that there are solutions that are out there that maybe you've already looked past. So it's start, time to start going through that pile of cards, right? Of people that said, you know what, I got a solution for you. Exactly. You know, um, and and I like that. What you're doing right now is making sure that the key to understanding that uh, the fixed upside is a valuable, valuable area where you have to invest a little bit of marketing. That's right. Now, our particular dealership, uh, we don't have a an actual service department where we service customers. It's a complementary side of the sales department. So our, yeah. although they're they're very valuable valuable in the, in the back, those that keep the cars running, keep everything good, making sure everything's looking good, they are a part of making sure that that product is standing tall and looking good when it gets presented to customer and inside of that like you were saying there's a huge huge profit center that's actually what keeps the dealership running and it's in the back pays all the bills and that was treated like a stepchild so so that we don't uh treat uh like the redheaded stepchild right i have a i have a stepson and i absolutely love him as a boy so i don't i don't treat any of my kids any different but i do want to treat everybody like family so let's Talk about the rest of our family that's helping this message get out to you today. And I want to talk about Elite FI Partners and our solutionary friends that are over at that incredible company that is making sure that people are getting solutions inside of their finance department. I mean, Michael Offman is is a champion of making sure that processes, people, and products are in place everywhere it is that he goes. You can get information by going to EliteFIPartners.com. You can also get information about how to think big by talking to Think Ad Group. Yes. yes. And Think Ad Group, they're amazing, man. They, it's, the thing about the Think Ad Group, it's more than just a sponsor. They're a partner with us. They're, they're friends of ours. They're family of ours, you know, and so is Elite. And pretty much every partner we've ever partnered up with. We, when we pick out a partner, we, we actually choose our partners. We don't just take any sponsor that comes on here. So to have people like the Think Ad Group, Elite FI partners, um, and the, and the couple more that we'll be announcing here in the next seven days, um, it's, it's real exciting to talk about these people because they're, it's partnerships. You know, it's, it's really nice. Just much like when we have somebody like Russell on the show, that's a partnership here now. Now, Russ is part of the family. Russ is part of the Car Guy Coffee, you know, com- community, the cafe, the whole nine. So I appreciate you for being here today, Russ. These sponsors are amazing and I'm, you know, they're really great people. And I'm sure they're watching right now or if they're not watching right now, they're going to be watching it later and they'll, they'll love what you're doing because you are, you're somebody that they would love to have on the think tank. And I don't, I'm going to invite you to that. We'll talk about that some more. Right. Yeah. Well, you would, you would love it. You're, you're perfect for it. You're everything. Speaking of sponsors, look at Terry. Anyway, I'm not going to say much more than that, but, um, but no, we're, we're really happy to have you here today, Russ. You know, we're, we're throwing in these sponsors really quick because we do love them. And we do appreciate them. And matter of fact, this five liner was brought to you by both of them folks. And we're, we're going to keep going. So question number three for you today, Hollywood. And the and reason why I'm going to ask you this is that it's because you're talking about your growth right now. You're talking about what you do. You're talking about your purpose. But somewhere in there, around 94 or, or maybe after or maybe before, there was somebody that helped, that really influenced you, somebody that helped you see the path of life, somebody that got you to that next level. 
you know, we all have mentors. We all have people that influence us, whether it's somebody you've met, whether it's somebody you have never met, but you read their book or whatever it is. Who would you call that person? And who would that person be? Dale Carnegie is one. Um, but, you know, the, I really had, when that, when that date occurred, I had a really profound spiritual experience and I knew something had to change. And I realized in that moment, uh, which is something that never happened uh, the previous 34 years of my life, that it wasn't anybody else's fault anymore. Um, mm. uh, I, every decision, every situation, every consequent was uh, consequent was my fault. It was nobody's fault anymore. I didn't blame anything. I, I grew up and became a man that day, but I really didn't know what a man was. I really didn't know what a father was, what a son was, what a husband was. Mm. So these are all things that started me on that journey from that day forward. And I realized that, you know, Albert Einstein said the significant problems and challenges that we face today can't be solved at the same level of thinking used to create them. So something had to change. And I realized that even, even more so today, that at this moment in time, I'm a sum total. This is just my experience. I'm a sum total of everything I've ever uh, heard, seen, read, or done up until this moment. So, you know, we've all heard the mm. definition of Sandy, right? Keep doing the same thing, expecting different results. Right. And everybody keeps doing the same thing. So I got involved with some people in some uh, training in my life. And I realized that all my life, I've been listening to people say, you can't do that. I tried that. That won't work. Mm -hmm. And they got interrupted by somebody who just did. I stopped listening to those people. So, they, so one of my um, uh, mentors, mm -hmm. he asked me, uh, well, when he knew I was ready, one of the first books I ever uh, remember really reading uh was uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. It was just a phenomenal book. And he, he said, Russell, I just want you to read 15 minutes a day. And he said, if you'll do that. And I said, oh, I can do that. He said, no, no, no. Reading 15 minutes a day is not as easy as you think it is, especially when you haven't read, right, which most people don't. Uh, and he said, 15 minutes a day, if you do that, I promise you that your life will transform in a year. And it wasn't six months. And it just it kept me it kept me thirsty. So – one of the things that that mentor taught me was that what you read, what you listen to, and who you associate with have a direct impact on your output today. So if you're not putting new stuff in today, you're going to keep getting the same crap tomorrow and the next day. And the next thing you're, you're looking back going, what happened? What happened? I am responsible today for what happens today and where I go from this day forward. And that's attributed directly to other people that I impact and work with on a daily basis. Oh, I love it. 